everyone. Thanks for joining me. Um, today is going to be a multi-level flow class. And what I mean by multi-level is just depending on your level of energy today, just kind of how you're feeling, um, you can modify this class. So if you want to work harder at a little higher intensity, you can always pump it up a little bit. Uh, if you want to take it a little soft, a little easy, there's always that opportunity. So uh, we will be using, if it's available or if you need it, um, if you have a block or two, uh, a strap or even a blanket to maybe place underneath the knees uh, just for a little comfort when we are on our knees. Um, this is going to be a pretty well-rounded practice. So we're going to get a little hips, a little shoulders, work on the, uh, toning our core a little bit. So whatever it is you need today, um, we're probably going to touch on it. So I'll meet you on the mat. We're going to begin at the top of the mat in some CTE mountain pose. So placing the feet right underneath the hips and letting the toes face forward. So aligning the edges of the feet so they're parallel to the sides of the mat. And actually look down and make sure that that's happening. A lot of times we just kind of place our feet and as long as they're underneath us, we're pretty much good. What we really want to do is create some alignment and begin to stack the bones. So once the feet are established and pointing forward, bring the arms next to the sides, the palms facing forward. So even there, just kind of feeling a nice opening of the shoulders, external rotation. And then as you begin to actively reach down to the legs, just to dial it up maybe to a four or five, just start to feel the floor underneath your feet and the sky above you, and begin to reach between the two poles. Actively reaching the fingertips down, so we feel those shoulder blades begin to soften down into their pockets. The belly is slightly engaged back toward the spine. So again, just really finding ourselves with just a nice bright sense of awareness of our bodies and now of our breath. So just take a few breaths in and out through the nose, closing your eyes, just feeling your body, and again, just taking a little breathing here. How are you feeling today? If you like working a little today, maybe exploring some of the edges, or maybe you just kind of want to just move and, and breathe and, and soften a little. Softly open your eyes and then gaze upward and then sweep the arms up high to the sky and let the palms meet. Intertwine the fingers, we call this temple mudra, intertwining the fingers, crossing at the thumbs and reaching the index fingers high. And keep the gaze straight forward. So let's just keep with that idea of rooting between the two poles, earth and sky. Rooting down to the legs and starting to lift up through the side bodies. So finding the length and extension of the arms actually coming from the mid body. So just holding here for moments, engaging the quadriceps so the kneecaps lift. And then bring your hands to your heart center. And then fold forward, letting the backs of the hands drop down onto the floor. Just let them soften here. Coming into a nice, easy forward fold, just reversing the flow of energy, coming into your breath, coming into your practice. And then press down into the legs and slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. On the inhale, sweep the arms, keeping the gaze forward, but sweep the arms back up again, temple mudra. And then go to bring the feet together at the bottom of the mat. Go ahead and reach up high, so you're just like this nice, Stick. Again, rooting down to the legs and reaching up through the side bodies. And let's do a little side bend. So just go ahead and hinge those hips a little to the left as you stretch and reach the arms straight over to the right. Feel as though your biceps are hugging in towards the ears. Finding your midline, so really hug the center as you come up upright again. And then now over to the left. So swing those hips to the right as you bend over to the left. Strongly rooting through the legs, so really feeling them press down, feeling how firm your legs are, and then just reaching over to the left, just opening that right side of the body. And then inhaling, coming back up to neutral, and let your arms float down to the sides of the body. Taking the feet wide to the sides of the mat, bringing the arms back up again, temple mudra, crossing the thumbs, pointing the index fingers. Now we're gonna do our windmills. So on the exhale, you're going to come around like you're drawing a big circle all the way around the front of your body and all the way up the other side. Just play with this a little bit. You can bend your knees as you come down. Again, anything that makes this comfortable for your body, we're just starting to move. So take it easy at first, kind of getting some of the rust out. And then one more time all the way around, nice little windmill. And then stop at the very top. 
Switching directions, so get a nice big circle all the way around. I'm just really feeling that all the way down and all the way up. So we'll find a nice wide range of movement in this. All the way down. And then all the way up. Let's do that one more time. All the way down. And all the way up. Bring the hands back down to the side of the body, stepping the feet back into hip width distance. Bringing the hands back behind the back and intertwining the fingers. And then reaching those arms down, maybe getting the heels of the hands to gently press together. You know, notice how that action just naturally draws the shoulders back. Once again, aligning the muscles, the skin, the bones, everything is in a nice long line here. Reach down to the arms and begin to lean back a little bit as you reach the arms, straighten them down towards the floor, lifting and blossoming up through the chest. Maybe opening the throat, if that's okay for your neck. And on the exhale, you're going to bend the knees quite a bit and drop your chest on top of your thighs. And then come into your variation of forward fold here. So maybe for you, that means bending the knees rather deeply, letting the chest rest on top of the thighs. Now just notice what the ears just did, okay, or the shoulders just did. The shoulders, the gravity will pull the shoulders down to the ears. See if you can slide those arms up a little bit. So really reach those arms up and get those shoulders up off the ears. Now begin to press the leg bones back. You can always keep a soft bend in the knees. And begin to align the leg bones over the ankles, pressing the thighs back. Wonderful chest opener here. So again, lifting the shoulders off the ears, hinging forward. Bringing the hands back down to the tailbone and bringing the fingers to the floor right underneath your shoulders. Now, if you need blocks here, you can use blocks or you can bring your hands to your shins. You're gonna come into Ardha Uttanasana, which is halfway lift. <laughs> so forward fold, we just add a little lift here. Leg bones back with the hands on the blocks or fingers on the floor or hands to the shins. Just use a little traction. Pull the spine forwards as you bring the leg bones back. Keeping the legs nice and firm and steady, just simply hinge forward once again into forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift again, lift the chest, stretch the spine forward, hips back, and on the exhale, fold again, forward fold. And then plant the palms to the mat, and go and step back and come to your knees. We're going to come into extended child's pose. It's a nice way to begin to open the hips. I want you to step your knees wide to the edges of the mat and let your big toes touch behind you. Go ahead and slide your hips back over your heels. Now, if this is a little too much for your knees, you can always take a block or two and place it right between your knees and then just kind of rest your torso, your ribs right on top of those blocks just for a little support. This is a nice way to get into the hinge and the knee and then the hip in a little bit less intense way. Again, that's just an option to use those blocks. Just take a few breaths here, just letting those hips settle back, just really releasing. Some of that surface tension just kind of comes to the surface, so just exhale, let it go. And then sliding the hands back, coming more up onto the hands and knees. And now we're going to take the hips, bring those knees in just a little bit. Now we're going to take those hips in big circles. So swing the hips over the right, brush them across those heels, and then come up onto the left side. So just big circular swirls here with the hips, with the chest, from your tabletop. It's almost like a tabletop that's moving. Sweeping the hips back and across and up the other side. And then switch directions. It's warming up here, just getting those, some motion into the joints. And then one more time all the way around. And then we're going to come back into tabletop. So now we're going to do some threads here. And again, if you like to have a blanket underneath your knees, go ahead and place the blanket underneath your knees. We want to have some space in the, in the front of the body. So oftentimes that's best found by bringing the hands just a little bit more forward. So a little bit more forward than tabletop. Reach your right arm high. So a little twist, a little turn, pressing into the left hand. 
On the exhale, you're going to bring that right arm underneath the left and then tap the right shoulder to the floor. Inhale, sweep that right open, high. And on the exhale, tap the right shoulder to the floor as you thread that arm through. One more time, sweeping the arm open. And then on the exhale, slide that shoulder down to the floor, let the side of your head rest. And if this bothers your neck at all, you can always pivot and bring your chin to your chest and look down at your left hip. If you feel you have some more space, you can kind of pick that right shoulder up off the floor and move it forward to the front of the mat a little bit. And then again, just playing around where do you find your space. Gently pressing into the left hand so the body begins to turn open. Just get a nice twist along the side of the body. Press into the left hand, go ahead and lift your torso back upright and hands just a little bit more forward than they would be in table. Inhale, sweep the left arm to the sky. And on the exhale, tap the shoulder to the floor. Inhale, sweep it up high. <laughs> they call this rolling panda. <laughs> I love it. Exhale, pandas are soft and cuddly, aren't they? All right, one more time, sweeping that left arm high. And then exhale, bring that shoulder to the floor. Really reach those left fingertips through. Your right hand is right in front of the face, or you can even walk it up to the top of your mat, and then just start to press in a little. Again, up for your neck, if you want to, you can turn and gaze at your right hip, and either scooching your shoulder forward or walking your knees back. Just find space here. Find space and length. Bring your right hand back in front of your face, and then go ahead and push back up onto all fours. So from all fours, just a few cat and cow, just to work through some spinal flexions and extensions. If you're um, caring for your low back at all, I would suggest maybe instead of coming into a full cow pose, maybe just come into a neutral spine. So just work with what's best for your own spine. On your exhale, roll into a cat pose. So root down to the arms, press the arms down. And curl the spine up. Inhale, opposite flexion, either stop in neutral spine, or come all the way down, dropping the ribs, turning the tail up for cow pose. Exhaling, cats. And inhaling, cow. So just a few times on your own. Just articulating to the spine. It's not about coming up far to the edges on those poses. It's more about gently supporting the spine with the navel as we just roll through the different articulations of those vertebrae. We're not trying to get anywhere in particular. We're just trying to get movement in there. All right, one more time. And then we're going to come back into neutral spine. All right, let's go ahead and do some balance work. That really helps engage the core. We find a lot of integration when we start to move away from center. So we'll begin by bringing the left leg back keeping the gaze at the floor, and then pushing down to the arms. So just as you root the arms down, you're going to lift the heart. So again, almost like this floating sensation. So nice and light. The top of the right foot presses and the belly lifts. This is going to engage your core. So if you tremble here a little or shake a little, that's quite normal. Keeping your balance, keeping your focus, right gazing down at the mat, go ahead and reach your right arm forward. So as you lift your navel up towards your spine, you're going to stretch and reach in opposite directions. Reach the heel back, stretch those fingers forward. And then on the exhale, we're going to round the spine like cat pose, tucking the knee and elbow together underneath. And then inhale, sweep it out. Exhale, curling it in, tucking it in. And then inhale, sweeping it out. And then last time, curling it in. And inhale, sweeping it out. Now for, now for lateral movement. First we're going front and back. Now how about lateral? So sweep your right arm out like a wing and your left leg out like a wing. This is pretty intense, so just work to your level. Maybe just come about halfway. You start to move into that airplane position. Just kind of test the water. Just again, see how much your body wants to, wants to challenge, be challenged today. Bring the arm and the leg back center, and then all the way back down to the floor. With the knees parallel, but just a little space between them, 
You want to let your hips rest back on your heels. So you can stay propped up on your hands here. You can come down to your forearms. Or if it's available, you can reach your arms all the way out on the mat. And just let your chin fall to your chest. It's a nice rounded spine shape here. Breathing into the back, stretching the back muscles. And just notice as you breathe how the breath will do that for you. So you don't even have to do anything. You just have to assume the pose. Coming back up onto all fours, we'll do that on the other side. So go ahead and line up your table legs right where they belong. And then reach the right leg back. Press down through the arms with the same amount of effort. Lift up through the heart. Pressing down through the top of the left foot and lift the belly. Keep the gaze. Imagine a line between those fingertips. Just keep the gaze soft and down. And then reach the left arm forward. Finding steadiness here, finding balance. The idea in balancing poses is, is not to stay stick still, okay? There's always movement in a balance because the body is always communicating. It's always reading information for us. Like, what do, what do we feel in our hand? What do we feel in our back shin? How was our belly feeling? There's lots of information being exchanged here. On the exhale, round the spine, tuck the knee and elbow together underneath the chest, and then inhale, sweep it out. Exhaling, curling it in, and inhale, sweeping it out, get nice and long. Exhaling one more time, curling in, tucking it in, and inhale, sweeping out. Now let's work toward airplane. So it starts to swing that left arm open and the right leg open. And again, just finding your degree that you want to work. Maybe it's about just a quarter of the way. Maybe it's all the way. Note that this intensity level will change the further you go. So just stay breathing. Be willing maybe to work just a little bit. And you'll gain new strength. Bring the arm and the leg back forward and back. And then bring the hand and knee back to the floor. One more time, back in extended child's pose, knees facing forward. So when we drop down, bolstering the ribs on top of the thighs, and maybe even kind of snuggling your spine right in between those thigh bones. And here you can even kind of maybe roll a little bit from side to side. Kind of see if that brings any new sensations, new stretches, new openings in the body. And then come back to center, come up onto all fours. Now just simply, let's go and just step the left leg forward. So we're going to come into a low lunge here. So the left foot forward. And again, be on that blanket on your back knee if you'd like to. And then we're going to walk forward. We're going to walk forward with those fingertips. We're going to lunge into the front knee. And as we do so, we're going to let that right hip come down towards the floor. So we're just going to soften that right thigh down. Pretty big stretch there. At the same time, though, we're going to lift the chest. Shoulders back. So again, dial us up maybe to a four. Just, just feel. Feel open. Instead of closing things off, just keep them open. And then go ahead and walk your hands back as you keep your chest still reaching forward. Okay, now the hands just walk underneath the shoulders. Maybe you stand those tippy fingers. All right, now here's your hamstring. <laughs> I knew you were waiting for that one. So go ahead and pivot on the heel so the toes are facing up. And then drag the heel back just a little bit. When you drag the heel back, you're going to feel your left hip move back. You can square your right hip forward. And then just to your degree, you can bow in, maybe bending your elbows if you want a little more intensity. Otherwise, you can stay up on your hands or even blocks. Walking the hands forward. I'm just going to demo with the blocks here. You can walk the hands forward with the blocks. Soften the hips down. And lift the chest up. Walking the hands or blocks back, and then bowing the heart in, toes facing up. So just a couple times on your own, working both the back side of the leg and the front of the leg. A couple times, let's go ahead and land back as we walk back. Let's all meet back here. Walking the hands back, lifting the chest. Pulling the heel back gently, and on the exhale, bowing in. Slight bend in that front knee. Always keeping that knee soft. Walking the hands with the blocks forward. And let's go ahead and bring both knees back. 
and then we'll step the right foot forward. And again, you can continue to use the blocks or just come up onto your fingers. Hinging into the front knee as you lift the chest and soften that left thigh down. Exhale, I'm coming back, walking the hands back, chest still reaching over your front leg as you dig that heel in and pull back. And again, just do this a couple times on your own, maybe even closing your eyes. It's kind of feeling how all those different sensations shift and move. Maybe notice how your, your core gently engages all by itself, just to kind of keep you steady, keep you firm. And let's meet back. We actually call this half Hanumanasana, half pose, half splits. Okay, I guess if you want to go in full splits, you certainly can. <laughs> but let's go ahead and just dig that heel in just a little bit. Pull the heel back. As the spine stretches forward, and now to intensify if you want to, you can start to bend the elbow and let your chest fall down towards that thigh as you reach the crown of the head down towards the toes. This really opens the back of the leg. Walking forward again, placing your hands under your shoulders, and go ahead and bring your right knee back to meet the left knee. Let's want to stand up on the knees as long as we're here. So standing up on those knees, making them about hip width distance. Again, you know where your hip points are, so those knees are stacked right underneath. We do just a simple little back bend here. So if back bends are not your thing, uh, maybe just stay upright here. If you want, go ahead and bring the hands back behind you. You can kind of hook your thumbs on the front of your waist and your fingertips meet behind your back. And as you lean back, you're going to press those hands down into your sacrum, actually like you're trying to move that bone down. You're encouraging your tail down, to point down, down, down. Draw the shoulders back. Slide those scapula, those shoulder blades under the heart. Just lean back. It's a nice way to open the front of the body. And come back into neutral. And let's plant the hands, walk the hands forward, curl the toes, and yes, downward facing dog finally, okay? So enjoy your dog here. So go ahead and walk the dog. Hey, okay, run with him if you want to. So just pedal those feet. You can swing the hips a little side to side. You can even maybe roll the rib cage open. You can just find some playfulness in there. Isn't it fun how dogs always want to play? Maybe they're lighthearted and they have fun. Okay, one more time, just shifting a little side to side, and let's come back to center. High up on tippy toes, press the front of the mat away, feel the heart, move back behind those ears, right in front of those biceps. All right, then you kind of scoop out that upper back a little bit. Belly is in, bend your knees here quite a bit, so you can Stick your tailbone high to the sky. And then keeping that tailbone high, begin to reach those heels towards the floor. Now, don't forget about your hands, right? You're really pressing in to the inner edges of the hands. Even maybe micro-lifting those wrists. We're getting some strength into the arms and the shoulders. Once you have that all established there, then you can reach the hips back. Reach the hips back. Really elongate to the sides. Bring those heels down towards the floor, then lifting and fanning the toes. Really get into the back. So you can notice when you fan your toes and make little movements there, how that changes the sensation in your calf muscles. Everything is connected. Everything is connected. Bring your feet together at the back of the mat, and on your inhale, let your right leg fly. Keep your shoulders square to the floor. If you want, if you feel up to it, you can always bend that upper knee and flex the ankle, and then roll that knee towards the sky. Just really take it over. And just notice how your body just naturally will move to balance you. On the exhale, unwind. Step the right foot down. On the inhale, root the right heel down, and let the left leg come up high. Standing strong on that right leg. Press them evenly to both hands so the shoulders are square to the mat. Now, if you want to start to bend and open to the side, bend that upper knee and flex the ankle, and then roll that knee towards up the sky. All right? Beautiful movement. 
Be creative here. Be spontaneous. On the exhale, unwind. And then bring the foot down. And step your feet wide to the back edges of the mat back there. So feet wide to the edges. And then now walk your hands up about halfway. So you still have the shape of downward facing dog in the upper body. But now you have a wide legged forward fold in the back body. So pressing into the hands, begin to pull your hips back. So as you pull your hips back over your heels, maybe you can come up onto your tippy fingers. Maybe you can draw the upper arm bones up and away so that the heart can melt. So pushing the chest towards the space between your thighs. And then bringing those hips back, lifting the upper arm bones, maybe even spreading those shoulder blades away from each other. Just really find some space here. Just move things around in there. Lots of furniture in there. Let's move it around. Let's rearrange the room. Walking the hands now up towards the feet. Good. Let's do a little crisscross here. So taking the left hand, crossing over and grabbing the outer right shin, and then crossing the right hand and grabbing the left shin. If you need to toe heel your feet further or closer together, please do so. So as we come down to this forward fold, pressing into the legs, hips come high. Begin to pull with your arms. Start to pull your leg bones in, but at the same time, press your leg bones out. So really active stretch here through your own resistance. This works the shoulders as well. So just really drop the head here to your ability. We drop the head and the neck and pull in opposite directions, pulling the hands in and pushing the shins out. Releasing that bind, placing your fingers on the floor. Let's go toe heel those feet back into hip width distance. Pressing down to the legs, keeping the chin into the chest. Slowly roll up one vertebra at a time. And standing upright, lifting the chin off the chest, belly in, spine nice and straight, sweep those arms high to the sky, and then exhaling, hands to the heart. So let's do some salutations. We'll do Sun, sun Series A and Sun Series B, and with also some modifications, okay? So if you want to modify, or if you're not sure yet, go ahead and just take your blocks with you up to the front of the mat just so that they're available. So, sun salutation A, bringing the hands into the heart center. Rooting through the legs, so pressing them down into the earth, lifting the heart up into the hands, so just nice and bright. Inhale, arms float up high. You can gaze up and add a little back bend at the top if you like. And on the exhale, fold into forward fold. Fingers to the floor or to the blocks. Inhale, halfway lift. So strengthen through the legs, leg bones back, chest comes forward, fingers on the floor or hands to the blocks. On the exhale, step back into downward facing dog. Inhale, shift forward. So when we shift forward, let's, let's create some momentum with our navel center. So before you even begin coming forward, draw the belly in and notice how the pelvis tilts and there's your forward momentum starting. So it's almost like you unfurl into a plank pose. So plank pose, right? We're gonna hold ourselves nice and steady. A lot of times if we're really not confident in our strength, we're not quite sure about things, we, we tend to tent up here a little bit. So if you can see this, it's kind of where my butt is still up high. As you gain strength and confidence, you're gonna to start to lower your hips down. When you lower your hips down and start to lift the heart, your navel is going to engage there. So that's when you're really feeling that, that is your plank pose. So it's really your belly holding you here, not your arms. Your arms are just holding your shoulders. <laughs> of course, it might not feel that. You're like, no, not really. My arms are holding me. Well, to a degree, yes. Now we're going to come down from high push-up to low push-up. Now, if you really want to work hard and really challenge yourself, you stay in your plank. Nothing changes in your plank. You're just going to bend the elbows. When you need to, you're going to drop to your knees. Now, for those of you that that's a little too much for your lower back or your shoulders, come to your knees now and flatten the feet. 
And then just bending the elbows, slowly lower your chest down to the floor. And there's always ways to do this, to modify it to our energy. Bringing the hands next to the chest and you know, wiggling those legs back to get a lot of space. Plant the tops of the feet. We're doing this one really slow. We'll quicken it up here in a little bit. Just to get those nuances of all of these postures. Reaching the legs back, pressing into the hands, and then just floating the heart up off the floor. So see if you can find, transfer a lot of that energy into lifting the spine. So lifting the spine, really working the spine here. You might even find that you don't even really need your hands, okay? You just can let your hands float somewhere. So just be mindful of how we can use our spine rather than our arms and shoulders. So as we float the heart, this is Bhujangasana, this is Cobra Pose. Now you know in your options, you can always come up into a little higher Cobra. That's pressing the hands into the floor a little bit, bringing those elbows in. Or if up dog is in your practice, you push your hands into the floor and lift your hips up and thighs up off the floor. All right, so it's always options. And then to come back into downward facing dog, imagine you have a string tied to your belly button. And I'm going to come around and from your lower back, I'm going to lift that string up and over and back into downward facing dog. So just give that a try. See how that works. And then go ahead and look forward. Step your right foot forward. Even this motion here is good for the hips. So it's good for the hips, good for the core. Step the right foot forward. And then the left foot. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold it out. And on the inhale, root through the legs. And let's go ahead and reverse swan dive. So sweep those arms all the way up high, hands to the heart center. All right? Now let's do this. One breath, one movement. That's the vinyasa. So again, using those blocks to however you need them. Hands at heart center. Inhale, float the arms up high. And on the exhale, bow the heart out over the legs. Fold, forward, fold. Inhale, halfway lift, just straighten the spine, leg bones back. And on the exhale, step back. Let's go into downward facing dog again. Again, just shifting, stepping to those transitions from front to back. So good for the hips. Now, draw the belly in, begin that forward momentum in the plank pose. So belly in, pelvis tilts, and there we go, into plank pose. You can just hold plank to your degree. If you need to come down to your knees, please do so. Take a breath here, inhale, and on the exhale, lower all the way down to the floor, on or off the knees. Hands next to the chest, inhale, cobra, high cobra or up dog. And then come back into downward facing dog. Again, however that happens, just make your own modifications. Make these movements work for you. Gaze forward now. Step the left leg forward and then the right. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold it out. Press down to the legs and on the inhale, circle sweep all the way to standing. And then exhaling hands to the heart. Good, stir to B this time. So inhale, sun salutation B, hands up, arms up, and let's go ahead and come down to a squat. All right, so bring the hips back. See how my knees are staying over the ankles, or at least they're trying to. Now, if that's a little too intense, you can bring your arms forward and draw the elbows back a little bit. So anytime we increase the lever length, it increases the intensity. So wherever you're at, bend the knees, bend the knees even more. Drop your chest to your thighs, fingers to the floor, chin to the chest. Press down to the legs, straighten the leg bones, and then you forward fold. Inhaling, halfway lift. Step back, just the right foot back, all the way back, and lay that back heel to the floor. Come forward into the front knee, and as you do so, start to lift the chest up off that front thigh. And on your inhale, we're going to come up into first warrior. Now, for first warrior, we want the feet. The feet are apart, front to back, but they're also apart, side to side. So if you need to, you can step your right toes a little closer to the right edge of your mat. That will help facilitate the squaring of the hips forward so you can really access the outer edge of that right leg. Laying into that back foot, you can feel your outer edge reaching back, arms are up, and you're gonna bend into that front knee. Now let's work into the knee a little bit here. I know some of you are working with your knees right now. 
So just bring your hands to your hips. And then depending on where you're at, and again, you have to be mindful, we're just going to make little circles here with the knee. Okay? So we're going to paint a little circle with the knee. So what we're learning to do here is we're learning to support the knee by using the structures surrounding the knee. But we don't know what those are until we really get into them. Okay? So for a little bit, it feels like the quads, <laughs> and then, but also know that there's some little ligaments and tendons in there. Now, when you're ready, we're going to switch directions. So maybe, maybe your movement here, maybe your circle is almost imperceptible. Maybe you're just working on learning how to hug and support the knee. If you're looking for a little bit more range of motion, you can paint a little bit bigger circle with that knee. Really feel that in the quad, and then when you're ready, let's go and slide that knee back into center, right over the ankle, and then reach the arms up again for first warrior, warrior one. On the exhale, hands come down, curl on the back toe, and then slide that left foot back into plank pose. So know some of those transitions are sometimes a little sticky, but the more we do them, the easier they will get. Now, I'm noticing here, I just looked at myself in the screen here, and I'm tenting. So let's all lower those hips just a little bit. Let's lift the chest and the belly engages. There's our plank pose, okay? The body always takes the least line of resistance, right? Can't blame it. All right, from high push-up, we're gonna move down to low push-up. So on and off the knees, bend the elbows, come all the way down, feet to the floor, legs stretched out, and on your inhale, cobra, high cobra, or lifting the hips up off the floor for up dog. And then when you're ready, let's come back into downward facing dog. Look forward, lift your right leg up off the floor and then step your right foot forward. Step your left toes to the left side of the mat and lay your heel to the floor. Lunge into the front knee, get light in the chest and let's come into first warrior on the other side. So again, just practicing how to strengthen our knee, okay? So your hands can be up, your hands can be at your hips. I'm just going to make little circles with that knee. Okay, just going to your perfect range of motion here. Just always feeling supported. And you, can, you know when you're doing a healthy movement. You can feel that. If it doesn't feel good, you don't need to do this one. Okay, so just a couple times. And then go ahead and let that knee slide right back into center. The knee is actually, it actually feels like the knee is coming up towards the edge of the foot, the outer edge. And then bring those arms back up again. So the warrior one. Good. On the exhale, hands come down, curl on the back toe, step back into plank pose. Now, if your shoulders have had it today, then you can just come back in a downward facing dog. If you want to, finish your flow from high push up, on or off the knees to low push up. Inhale, cobra, high cobra, or up dog, and then back into down dog. Notice that transition when you come from up from a back bend into down dog, you actually use that string idea again, tight your navel. You're reaching up and back through the belly. Gaze forward with the hands, and let's go ahead and walk those feet one step at a time <laughs> up to the top of the mat. Even that's good mobility. Inhale, halfway lift, lift the spine, stretch it forward, leg runs back, exhale, forward fold. Bend the knees, bend the knees, bend the knees, let your chest rest on your thighs, reach the arms forward. Bring the arms up, and then press into the legs, and let the hands come down into heart center. One movement, one breath. Inhale, sweep the arms up high, Exhale, sink the hips down low. Arms stay high or arms come in front. Bend the knees, drop the chest to the thighs, straighten the legs, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back in a downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the left toes above the floor, gaze forward. Step the left foot forward, back heel to the floor. Inhale, lift the torso. Bring the arms with you, warrior one. Exhale, hands come down, step back into downward facing dog. Inhale, right toes lift, gaze forward, step the right foot forward, back heel to the floor, inhale, lift the torso, 
and bring those arms with you. Exhale, hands come down, curl the back toe, step back in a downward dog. If you want to flow, flow with me here, flowing forward into plank, chaturanga, inhaling cobra, high cobra, up dog, and then back into down dog. Pause here. Now, if extended child's pose is going to be your place of rest, go ahead and come down onto the knees. Let the toes touch, and then go ahead and sink those heels back. You know what, everybody, let's do that. So just a nice way to kind of neutralize the spine. We've moved the hips, just those step back and step forwards. We've got some motion into the hips, so your hips might feel a lot better here this time. Just noticing your body. That's the joy of this practice, is just noticing how we move. And though we might not like it at first, right? We know that every time we do this, we're gonna kind of, it's going to come with a little bit more ease, a little bit more balance. We're remapping, we're reshaping our bodies and our minds. All kinds of possibilities out there. Coming up on all fours, plant the hands, curl the toes, downward facing dog. All right, so our final challenge from our flow practice, we're going to bring the right toes up off the floor. You're going to look forward, and then you're going to step the right foot forward. But this time, you're going to stay on those back toes. Now, we're going to come into a high lunge. So if you're not quite sure about that today, you can always drop down to that back knee. And we did this earlier, right? We're kind of in a slow lunge position. So again, if you want to have that blanket underneath your knee, if you're going to land on your knee, do that. If you want, again, lift that back knee off the floor and press the heel back. Come up onto the front thigh and lift your torso, okay? So this is a pretty strong stance, okay? So we bend into the front knee, we soften the hips down a little, so we lower our center of gravity, that's always good. And then just know, like, again, your legs are spread front to back, but you're also kind of embracing the space in between. Now, you're not cutting off space. You just are aware of that space. Reaching the back leg back, lifting the heart muscle right over the belly so the spine is nice and straight. And then you can bring the arms up. Okay, so now here's where it's going to get pretty tricky. Anytime you want to, you drop back to that left knee. We're going to do some rotations here. We're going to keep the gaze forward. We're going to keep the hips square to the front. But we're going to come into a reverse warrior, too. So go and bring the left arm forward, right arm back. Cinching up the waist a little bit. Inhale, bring the arms back into warrior one. And on the exhale, lower the right arm down, left arm back, warrior two arms. Inhale up. And then exhale, left arm forward, right arm back. And again, you can do this to the back from the back knee. Okay, let's do that one more time, either side, right arm forward, inhale up, and left arm forward, and then up. Hands on either side of the front foot, let's go step back in a downward facing dog, or come into your child's pose. Give your legs, give your hips, give your breath a rest. Again, that is really challenging. A very challenging movement. We balance, we square off the hips, and we turn through the waist. And then go and come up on all fours. Curl the toes and come into downward facing dog. That's when we only have two legs, right? <laughs> we'll do that on the other side. So from downward facing dog, just lift your left toes up off the floor, gaze forward. Tuck the knee into the chest as you step forward. And then we're going to stay on those back toes. So if you need to, I want you to find a lot of space. So wiggle those front foot forward. Okay, wiggle those front foot forward. And then now if you want to, you can drop to that right knee. And then just come up this way. Okay, you can do everything that we just did. You can do that from the knee. Okay, if you want to, curl on that back. So again, and really press the heel back, lifting that back knee up off the floor, and then lifting the torso. If you're taking this balance, this is very challenging because we're on those back toes. It's always helpful to lower the center of gravity. You really got to tone to that back leg. The deeper you go, the more you have to be mindful of that back leg. 
Bring the arms up into crescent lunge, okay? Crescent lunge, we usually lean back, but because we have other movements, we'll just keep it upright. So we're gonna rotate it first. So you're gonna bring the right arm forward, left leg back. So you're rotating, revolved lunge, back to center, and then left arm forward, right arm back. More of a warrior two. Inhale, center, right arm forward. Inhale, center, left arm forward. Inhale, center, right arm forward. Inhale, center, left arm forward. Windmill the hands, come back down, and step back into downward facing dog. Ah, pause in your dog. Well, you know you've been working a little, and again, you can always modify these, right? Or even take a break. But it's kind of fun when downward facing dog becomes our resting pose because this is such a wonderful tonic for the body, this pose. We stretch, we lengthen, we strengthen, we feel grounded, but at the same time, we lift up high. There's all sorts of availability here, all sorts of space and possibility. Now, look forward, come into a little bit of a plank pose. So here I'm gonna say it's okay to tense just a little bit here. And then you're gonna pick your right toes up off the floor, and you're gonna bring your right knee to your right wrist, and then drop your foot down the floor. You're gonna slide on those back toes. So those back toes are lifted. You slide that back leg all the way back. So left leg comes all the way back. Then come into pigeon pose. Now for some of you, a pigeon pose doesn't work. You can always come around and do a seated number four, okay? Seated number four. Let's see if we can work with pigeon pose. So if our hips are tight, you're gonna find that you're gonna really roll onto your right sit thumb. So what we wanna do is we wanna use the strength of the arms to kind of push ourselves up, square the hips, so that means maybe that right knee is moving back a little bit, okay? And you come down onto the forearms. So pigeon pose is one of those, I call them a somatic pose. And what that means is we really have to be aware of the sensations. That's how the body talks to us. That's how it gives us information. And so we just listen. We, we hear those, we hear that sensation in our bodies. And we make adjustments. If something doesn't feel right, we, we really do intuitively know how our body is supposed to move or how we best take care of it. So make any little adjustments that you feel are necessary. And this is a mindful practice. This is, these aren't drills. This is very mindful. We're always doing what is best for our bodies, just listening and giving our bodies what it needs. And go and begin to walk the torso upright. Use your hands for a little support. Curl on the back toe and just kind of scoot your knee back to your tabletop just for a moment, just neutralizing everything. Or if you want to, I guess you can kind of swing your hips from side to side or maybe make some circles or maybe just drop back into an extended child's pose. Again, anything, everything is available to you. Coming back up onto all fours, come back in a downward facing dog, lifting those knees up off the floor. And then look forward, and when you're ready, pick up your left foot and step your left knee to your left wrist. And just angle, anchor your foot down to the floor and slide that back leg back. Again, any little adjustments, any little wiggles that you can make to keep squaring the hips forward. Even if that even if that bum kind of hangs, kind of does some hang time there in the air, if you need to, you can even take a blanket and stuff it underneath there just for a little support. But really walk that right leg back. Maybe open up the front thigh. 
coming maybe down onto the elbows, or maybe even, you know, if you need to stay on your hands on this side, that's fine too. Maybe you can down to your elbows. You can even reach your arms flat out on the mat. Remember in our pigeon poses that you can always intensify them a little bit. If you uh, take the heel and move it forward a little bit away from your right hip point and start to move the shin more parallel to the top of the mat, that will always increase the intensity. You can always flex in that ankle to keep the knees safe while the hip opens. And then go ahead and walking the torso up. And instead of down dog, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of lean over to the left a little. And we're going to swing that right leg all the way over and around. Oh, that feels good. Stretch those legs out. And while you're stretching those legs out, go ahead and have me grab the strap, your strap or your dish towel or whatever it is you have. Okay? You might not even need it. Let's shake those legs out a little bit. Quick. Okay, let's go ahead and do something. Um, forward fold, I know that we've seen forward fold, I know that we can do this sometimes without the strap, um, but I want to just approach this a little bit differently. It's something I've been doing with some of my students. So, go ahead and come forward, go ahead and wrap the strap or the towel or whatever it is you have across the bottoms of your feet, making sure that the feet stay about um, still hip width distance. So basically you're setting up in Tadasana here, okay? Take an end of the strap in each hand, so one end, one hand, and then just walk your hands down as far as they'll go. So just a nice little hinging forward. Now as you begin to now bend the elbows and pull back on that strap, you're going to find that your feet are going to start to collapse in towards each other. Now we're going to take the outer edges of the feet. So we're going to start to press them out into the strap. So you are actively, think about what your hips are doing, what your leg bones are doing. You are actively externally rotating, okay? And this, I don't know about you, but this gets into my hamstrings, my glutes, even up and down the sides of the legs. And so for everybody, it's just going to be a little bit different. You just challenge yourself until you feel something. So really press those outer edges out. Lean forward just a little bit more. And then remembering that forward folds, the goal is not to get down and lay on top of our legs. It's to extend the spine. So as you reach the spine forward, you're actively kind of reaching back to the systems. So this is a very, very active, dynamic stretch. Doesn't look like it is from the outside, but you can certainly agree internally. There's a lot of energy moving around. Lots happening. And then go and sit up, go and release the strap. And then go ahead and scooch forward, bring your feet to the floor, knees are bent. And then we're just going to slide our hands right underneath our knees. And we're going to walk our heels up. And okay? we're going to start to balance on our six bends. And maybe we can lift those heels off the floor. They can come here, they can come here, or if you want, you can even stretch them out high. Just a little bit of core work here, finding the six bones, reaching the heels up and away. This is your variation. Even if it's here, just always keeping that spine nice and straight. Just a little bit of a lean back so the spine stays straight. No, no rounding here, just keeping the shoulders down and back. So the heart is radiant. The heart is radiant. And then bring the feet to the floor towards the front of the mat. And then simply open up those knees so the soles of the feet come together. Then we're going to reach forward, cupping the toes with the hands. Inhale, lift the chest. And on the exhale, we're going to bow it out. Again, just pulling the spine forward. Maybe if you come forward enough, you can get those elbows like to the front of your shins. And you can actually push into your shins and stretch the spine forward. Go ahead and sitting up tall again. Bring the soles of the feet to the floor. Bring the arms forward. 
For the chin to the chest, we're slowly going to roll down one vertebra at a time. Just nice and slow and control. All the way down. And then when you're there, bring the knees into the chest. You go ahead and rock gently side to side. Coming back to neutral. Go ahead and keep your right knee into your chest, but extend the left leg out. Release the right hand and the right arm off to the side like a wing. And then with your left hand, go ahead and guide that right knee over across the body. So feel as though you could actually roll all the way over onto your left hip. Let your right knee drop and just, just let gravity take this here. If your shoulders are a little tight, you might find that your right arm is kind of floating there. If it doesn't meet the floor, then take some of the intensity out and then just reach the upper arm high. Letting the back of the hand rest on the floor above your head. Well, maybe you find some place in between. So again, just experiment here. Just find a nice opening in the chest. If you really like the idea of a twist here, just keep your leg anchored down, but push into the back of your head and slide your left shoulder out to the left a little. Get out from underneath you. Sometimes that will have to help square the chest and the heart space to the sky. So not only is this a nice way to stretch the outer rim of that leg, but also a wonderful twist. As you breathe, just notice the different fluctuations of your body in response to your breath. And then go ahead and slowly unwind from that. Release, square yourself, feet to the floor, kind of recenter yourself on your mat, both knees into the chest. Roll it up pretty tight there, just really tuck those knees in. If you want, you can even lift your heart up off the floor and squeeze it in pretty tight. Sometimes a nice stretch to the low back is required. And then lie back again, keep the left knee in, extend the right leg out. Left arm out like a wing, and then with your right hand, guide that left knee over and across. So just let gravity start to pull that leg down towards the floor. Just surrender to that gravity. Any option with the right left arm, like a wing, or up above the head, or somewhere in between. Perhaps pressing into the back of the head or even into that right elbow, give yourself a little lift so you can slide that right shoulder blade up from underneath you, squaring the heart towards the sky. Deep abdominal twist. Let's breathe here. Bring in all the fresh new air and let go of all the old stale air. Let your breath just sweep through you like a gentle breeze that gently moves clouds across the sky. Move away. Let go of some of that achiness, some of that dullness. In yogic terms, we call that apana. Metabolic byproducts of just living. We've had a lot of cell activity in our practice today. The cells always produce some metabolic waste, so just allowing the body to cleanse itself do what it does best. And just support the organs that do that. Bring that knee back up to center. Bring the knees into the chest, rocking side to side. And then one final stretch before Shavasana. So take the pink, both uh, peace fingers in both hands, bend the knees out, and then grab your big toes. Stretch your heels towards the sky, and keep the legs parallel. There's gonna be a soft bend in the knees here. And you can draw the belly down, just to see if you can anchor some of that low back towards the floor. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just the intention. It's actively lengthening the spine. 
As you keep the belly down, anchoring the spine down, begin to stretch and reach through the heels a little bit more. Now begin to bend the knees a lot and let the knees fall off to the side. Release the toes and reach for the outer edges of your feet. Create a nice 90 degree angle here so your heels are stacked right above your knees. And then just using your hands, just gently guide your knees down towards the floor on either side of your body. And here you can rock gently side to side. This really opens up the lower back of the body. So you can Massage some of the organs in the back. You can massage some of the lungs in the back body. And then, of course, the lower back and sacrum. Even that, there's an SI joint in there. We never really talk about that joint, but it's there. Just kind of ranging through that a little bit. Coming back to center, bring the legs up at 90 degrees. Let the hands rest next to the hips, palms facing down. Once slowly point the right toes and slowly lower the right leg all the way down to the floor as you keep that left leg actively reaching high. Once the right leg is down, slowly lower the left leg to meet it. It's nice and intentional. Bring the arms up way above the head, stretch and reach. Really pull your body in opposite directions. Create space. Pull yourself up out of your lower back. Create some space between the ribs. As you reach the legs, create some space in the hip joint. And on the exhale, go and soften. Go ahead and bring your arms next to your body. And then roll your arms open so the palms are facing up. You can find that if your feet, if your legs are pretty much together, actually I'm going to encourage you to just kind of walk your heels out towards the edges of your mat. And just roll your legs a little side to side until they just naturally flop open. Close the eyes and let's just take a few moments here, Shavasana. On your next inhale, draw the breath slowly into your nose, like really long, like just little sips all along the way, just little sips of breath. Feel your body begin to expand and open and rise with your breath. Breathe it all the way out to the edges. Hold at the very top. Hold. Hold. And release, let the belly gently fall to the spine. Let all that air fall out of the body. And then pause at the end. And when you're ready on your next inhale, very slowly through the nose, little by little by little, breathe in. Fill every space with your breath. Nice and easy, but very full. Once you come to the top, hold. 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 And release. Slowly let the air come out of the body. Belly falls to spine. And pause. And come back to that soft rhythm of breath that you were just in. Simply being breathed. No action, no thought required on your part. Begin to gently roll your head from side to side. 
Feel your neck. Feel the back of your head. Side to side. Bring the head back to neutral. And then bring the right knee up towards the chest. And then the left knee, bring the left knee up towards the chest. Bring your hands to the front of your knees and gently rock side to side. And then rock over either to the left or to the right side. Whatever feels good. Just let your body rest here. Just pause. And then with your eyes remaining closed, go ahead and make your way to a seated position. Letting your hands rest on your knees for a moment as you realign everything. Bringing your chest up, spine tall, bringing the hands to the heart center. And just bow in the head. And with the hands at the heart center, you can turn your hands and open your palms so the palms are facing up and bend your fingers and your thumbs a little to create a little bowl. A little space to receive blessing. And also an offering. Stretch your arms out just a little further away from the body. And then on your inhale, gaze up and sweep the arms all the way up high. And then exhaling hands to the heart. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Awesome.